Hey everybody, Marion here. Um, today I wanted to give you some tips on decoupaging. Um, I'm not going to do a whole project because that's going to take probably a long time. So I want to just give you enough tips to get you started and um, things that might help you if you already know how to decoupage. Um, maybe some of these extra tips might be might be helpful, hopefully. So anyway, let me get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you actually is this vintage uh, train case here I decoupaged. Um, and all these images here, or most of them, I got from Pinterest. So if you are a Pinterest follower, which a lot of you are, you can, obviously you're putting pictures on there that you really love, so uh, that would be a fun start, is to just pick the images you already like, cut them out, and then, you know, put them on your project. So that's what um, I did with this. In this case, is actually it keeps all my um, scrapbooking things, or I should say, um, Smashbook. That's what I do. So or I enjoy doing one of the many things I like to do. So these train cases are really good for that. So if you find them, you can get them at the thrift store really cheap, um, Goodwill, places like that. So I'm going to get you started or help you with some tips. The first thing I did actually um, when I decided to do this train case is of course I needed to get my images so I put them all on my computer and then I printed them out and I just used regular paper. I didn't um, use any cardstock or anything like that so this is just very flimsy paper and I think the reason I, I choose this instead of the stiffer paper is because it, it just works better around corners and and things like that. So the only thing that you need to know though is that if you print from your computer and you just put the image on your project and you start putting the glue down it will um, let me show you, it is going to smear the ink. So I'm going to show you an example. Hopefully this this will work. Now I use just the regular Mod Podge. It's pretty inexpensive um, and I go through quite a bit of it. There's also the Claudine Helmuth um, Studio mat, which is very very good but it's just more expensive and this is kind of a four ounce jar here and I just go through too much of it and can't afford to buy that much of that. So let me show you. I When I need to um, put the glue on my Im images, I always find some kind of plastic sheet laying around, um, which really helps. So, I the top image here does not have any spray. What I did, I might be jumping ahead. This one is without any type of, of sealant. And actually it's not doing too bad, but I will show you in a minute how the glue is smearing the, the image, the ink. It's pulling the ink off and you can probably see a little bit of pink on the side. Let me wipe this, this off. The second image here, what I did, and what you're going to want to do to your printed images, is you want to give it a coat, or probably two or three coats, light sprays, of a sealer. Okay, so you're just going to spray it. Um, this is also another matte, matte finish sealer. So just use, I guess it doesn't really matter whether you use glossy or matte, whichever is your preference, but I use matte, a matte sealer. I sprayed the bottom image about, this one I did twice. I usually, if I'm going to put on a project, I'm going to do it about three times just to make absolutely sure that it doesn't smear. And I guess it just seals in the, the ink from the image so that when you put it on your project, it just doesn't smear the the um, the ink at all. Oh, that's my phone. Okay, so let me do this top one again. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. This one, I'm I am pushing down pretty hard too. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to let it dry. I'm not going to wait for it to dry, but I'm just going to show you. Hopefully you can see that. The top image 
um, definitely has pink around the whoops, sorry about that, around the sides here. And the bottom image is fine. It stayed just perfectly. There's no um, you know, smeared ink or anything. So there, there's a big difference there. Um, and it just takes a few minutes, it doesn't take long at all, to do your two, three coats of the sealer. Another thing I wanted to recommend are brushes. Uh, what you just saw me using was a Martha Stewart brush. These, I can't remember how much these were, but this came in a pack of, I think, three or four brushes. It's a little bit more expensive, but it lasts so long, and glue just gets really sticky and messy. Um, yeah, I wash out my brushes really good, but still, they, they go through a lot when you're gluing with them. But the Martha Stewart brushes do an excellent job. So these are my very favorite brushes. Uh, another brush, and I, this is just one of those really inexpensive brushes, and I don't know what uh, what you call these types of bristles. I'm sure somebody out there watching this does. But they're really, really inexpensive. And what happens is when I'm gluing, like here they're, the bristles are coming off, when I'm gluing and putting my image down, I have these little hair fibers that are on my piece. And so I have to constantly pick out the little pieces of, of hairs and then I have to go over the image again with the glue and smooth it out again. And But I'm constantly picking out the hair fiber. So I really, really don't use these anymore. The third brush that a lot of people use are these very, very cheap brushes. And I do not like them. I don't, it just doesn't, for me, it doesn't seem to smooth it out as well as a regular brush does. I mean, I just love the way this pushes the glue around. So I would recommend investing in a, in a good brush. Um, so also, for decoupaging, there's a kit that they have at the craft stores. And this one I bought um, in a pack, and these two came together. And so this one rolls out the glue. Once you get your image down, it rolls it out. It's supposed to push out the bubbles. And I guess if I was working on a table or something big and flat, this might work. But sometimes the roller stops moving and there's some glue on here and it just kind of gets stuck and it doesn't seem to work for too long. So I end up going to this little thing here. It's, it's rubber and it has kind of an angle tip right here. And what I do when I put my image down is I push out the the bubbles out of my my image because a lot of people complain about getting wrinkles and, and bubbles and things like that in their decoupage project. So I do that and it just works amazing. This is really my very favorite thing I've ever had for decoupage. So I'll show you real briefly how I um, what I do when I decoupage. So of course this this piece is done. So I'm not going to really put the glue on or anything, but I'm just going to show you how I would do it. So I have my image, and um, you know I've cut it out, and I kind of decide where I want everything to go. I don't tape it down or pre-plan or anything. I just kind of eye it and I, I go for it. And so I cut it out, I get my glue, so I'm pretending to get the glue, I'm going to put the glue down first, and then I have my image, and I don't put the glue on the back. I just lay the image down on top of the glue, and then I go back and forth over the image, and like I said, when it's full of glue, I'm kind of pressing out, smoothing out the, the image like that. Okay, and that's kind of pushing out the air from underneath. And then once I do that, I kind of go back and forth again with the glue. And then as it dries, not when it's completely dry, but when it's in that in-between stage, you still will get these little bubbles or wrinkles. And oftentimes if I just kind of work it with my finger and I just push it out, it, it gets rid of the rest of the, the bubbles. So you can still do that as your project's drying. And then once my images are all on, then I take my glue again 
get it, you know, tons of glue on there, and I really give it a nice thick coating over the entire thing. Even where there's no paper on my actual um, train case here, the glue's going over the entire piece. So it really is giving it a good finish. Um, and I do that probably, I would say two, three times, you know, however much you want, but but this is all glued down pretty well. I mean, it's not going to come up. And so if you do have, you know, places that come up, then all you do is just get some glue in that corner, wherever, and then push it down with your thumb, um, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do, and then just push down, and it will glue nice and flat for you. So that's basically how I get my images, it, images down. It's really easy. And it goes pretty fast. And this one was, was easy because I have spaces in between. And what I mean by that, let me show you. This is a suitcase I did. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but this is a suitcase I did. And with this one, the images are side by side. I, I left no spaces on each side of the suitcase here. So everything is completely covered by an image. Um, what's challenging about suitcases or anything with a cor is corners, basically. Anything you do with a corner is go going to be challenging. And it, as far as I know, will never lay completely flat. You're going to have little bumps and, and things like that. So you, I just work um, small little uh, pieces of paper at a time. I, you can never really put a big giant piece of paper here and expect it to be flat. So I try to just cut small images and just work the corners, pushing it in. Sometimes I take a little tool or something small and I just kind of really work it in the corners. Again, going back and forth with my finger to really work that glue in there, work out as many uh, wrinkles as, as there are. And I know this this suitcase here, it's, it has wrinkles and it's going to have little imperfections, but it's okay. It's I've accepted the fact that that's just decoupage and you know it's not going to be perfect, but you know you just got to keep working it back and forth. So the flat surfaces are going to be the easiest for you to do. Um, but again, like ones like this are a little bit easier because you don't have to line everything up right next to the to the image. So these are, are easier to do for me and I think it looks just as cute. This was easy to put side by side because it was just a flat surface here and I left some space up here that didn't get covered but it doesn't bother me. Um, and then finally after you're all done and you've put your three coats of Mod Podge sealer on your um, project then you could either just leave it like that. I don't know if you would want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Your three coats is going to be your glue. So two to three coats of, on top of your project is this because it is a sealer. So you really don't need to come along afterwards and put a spray over it or anything. Unless you really want to, but I don't really know why you would have to because the Mod Podge glue already acts as a sealer. So I think that is about it. I hope that was helpful. I hope some of the tips helped you. Um, excuse my green tape here. Uh, I just want to always make sure that I stay within the, the frame, you know, so I'm not off to the side and you can't see what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching. And if you want to follow my blog, you can find me at MariansRetreat.com. And I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. Bye.